special session for May 13th, 2020. Signing the show up to cell phone and please join us for the pledge. Commissioner Alberts, you leave us with the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody, and everybody that's on Zoom. Uh, we have two items for the special session. First item listed is business access discussion. And Betty, welcome. We're going to go over that first, and we will get to the second item. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we're very hopeful as Board of Commissioners that the reopening plan will be accepted. It's under review at this time. We, uh, there's a bit of a delay. We're supposed to know by today, but it looks like tomorrow the governor's office will let us know which ones are accepted or not. And coinciding with that uh, discussion about... Um, That's like the down and dirty. Uh, uh, someone's on, on mute. Whoever's not on mute, could you please mute? Thank you. Maybe. Thank you. All right. So, um, anyway, so we're hopeful for that to coincide with that as uh, for us to consider. Um, we have extended a week longer than what we're going to have screening done and the doors locked down. But uh, I'll give you my opinion. It's time for. The doors be open with signage and the public be able to come and go. Um, so that's for discussion for the board to decide today, action consideration. Um, so basically, uh, if both of you to support opening the doors, and I have a few other things to discuss. We'll probably need to if we do that. So. Okay. Do you want to discuss that now? or? Yeah, I would, but I, are you guys pretty much ready to? I am. Yeah. Okay. So um, I believe that the doors for discussion, the doors uh, be open our regular hours, eight thirty to five, just like before. Okay. Um, signage on all the doors will be in English and Spanish, and I believe that Melanie has already prepared to build a signage to put together. Am I correct on that, Melanie? Um, each office will do the screening guidelines just like we've already set up before. So it's up to the office uh, that's, uh, for them to do the screening. That, that uh, form was created, I hate to say it's almost two months ago, or it was two months ago, so we already have that in place. And I appreciate that little bit of smirk there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I had the same thing as I said that. Yeah. Um, uh, the other thing I was thinking, uh, the departments, we've let all of our departments uh, manage their departments, so they need to adhere to the six-foot social distancing, self-sanitize, sanitize, wipe down offices as needed, janitorial staff, janitorial staff to continue to do the sanitization and step it up a little bit. For the, the self-distancing with the offices, if the offices believe they need tape, put out there, they can do that themselves. If we run into the hallways, we need to do that, then we can uh, have our maintenance crew do that. So I threw a lot out there. That's my general idea of opening up and some of the guidelines I think we can use. I'm fine with that. I, I really, I'm not sure we want to do a bunch of lines for public to be standing out in the hallways. You want to keep those hallways clear. Because I, you really can't maintain six feet of distancing between people as they pass. So, I I agree with you. I, um, I was thrown out there any suggestions yeah, or right, thought. Right. I believe offices should maybe use this. As, as some of them are putting on their sides. Um, say one customer at a time. Maybe have a chair out in the hall for another one to be waiting that give you the distance. Um, but I, I'm still very comfortable for the department heads and elected officials to govern the people that come in and out yeah, of the office. I think the department heads should be able to make that call. And that's, yeah, okay. good. So, yeah, as long as it's nothing too extreme. <laughs> now we're going to get to <laughs> So, <laughs> Mark, do you have anything to add, sir? Nope. Um, so, 
So I want to open it up for any suggestions from anybody on Zoom or anybody here, any suggestions or thoughts or anything maybe we're not catching now. We're going to open up to the public. Just to let people know, most other courthouses around the state have been open the whole time with just uh, department students and screenings and stuff. Uh, we we made our decision way back when, when there was, um, we had some concerns. So today we're ready to sort of follow the opening up of the phase one. So. Will the screening position here, will she stay here? No. The doors will be open as, as well. Okay. And so any screening will be done by the department's department staff. Man, the crowd goes wild. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm fine with that. I think it's, that's perfect. Okay, Melanie, you guys, did you guys get a chance to meet at the safety committee? Yep. Was there any concerns that need to be brought forward, or any thoughts? Yeah, I bet you guys won't be in favor of them, so I don't. Oh, no, that's fine. Well, let us. That's what we're here they discuss it. So the safety committee believes that you should have tape lines like staging areas to make sure because then they might go in the office before if there's some if there's a guest there um so they think that you should have tape lines down the hall and like have arrows and stuff for direction but sounds like you guys aren't in favor of that so uh, my concern is keeping the hallways clear right but how do you keep people from congregating in offices that's what our conundrum was. Like, you can put a sign on your door saying that one gets their time. But yeah. what if they, like, start? Well, I mean, I, I, I think what if they start this... acting like normal human beings. Right. <laughs> Be careful. I know. Well, I, I think people can, when you walk around the corner and just into another office, being that is the office that you're intending to go into, uh -huh. distance yourself if you feel like, you know, you need to distance if there's too many people in the room. Maybe that'll hurry people up and they'll get their business done. And, you know, not know. as much to chat and keep things going. I don't know. I'm not trying but, to be important. But right. No, 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 no. Absolutely. I, I understand yeah. the concern. I don't know if it's personally, I don't really know if we want a bunch of tape out in the hallway where we're having people lined up and standing out in the middle of the hallway. This is what businesses are doing now. I'm not. I'm just being devil's advocate. This is what we're asking people. So yeah. I don't know if we should if we should walk the walk that we're asking or however that saying goes. And there's no, but we you know it's, it's different. Like in the Safeway, where you can do a one way hallway. Mm -hmm. We don't have a one way hallway. I know. Yeah, if you go down to the sheriff's office, you got to come back down that same hallway, mm -hmm. and you're going to be passing people. And mm -hmm. It's just the nature of the. I don't know. It's it. It was yeah. a. It's a difficult situation. I don't know what you guys want to do. So I, I think maybe we're overthinking this. We had a screener put at the door. We haven't been over planned, to my knowledge. We even, there was jury yesterday. Um, downstairs, the chairs were spaced out. People done pretty good. If we open up and if we see that there's a problem and the department had elected officials aren't addressing it as too many people are coming into office, then maybe we have to put a little bit stronger guidelines in, but I believe most citizens are, are distancing themselves and have suggested to self distancing. Mm -hmm. um, have to be honest, probably some of us that work here are in the worst violation of all the world. To be perfectly honest with you. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I haven't seen the public ones come in, they just want to get in and get out. I, I would be in favor of just opening the doors and not putting tape down the halls at this time. What do you guys think? I, I'm just, I'm not convinced that tape is necessary. If the department decides that they want tape, uh, they're more than welcome to come forward or ask if they can if they put that down in the hallway or something. <coughs> if, if they're starting to get a lot of people show up and it becomes a problem, until it's a real issue, I don't know if we really want to be putting that kind of effort into trying to fix something that's not broken. 
I mean, we just need to make sure that we are cognizant that people aren't congregating as they're waiting to get into an office, that they're not, you know, right next to each other talking and visiting, that they stay six feet apart. And we just, as a group, can, you know, pay attention to that. Because anyone that's waiting for someone, you want to talk to them, you want to visit, you want to be yeah. who yeah. we are. Okay. And we just have to be cognizant of that when we, you know, walk down the hall. Hey, sorry to say, but you guys got to get apart while you're waiting to get in that office. So, Amy, how, how did it work on jury duty yesterday? I wasn't out in the halls much. Did the public want to talk to each other? Was it a problem, or did they self-regulate pretty well? They actually self-regulated really well. Um, anybody that was concerned, and we also put it on the jury tape, that they could bring their own mask. They were really good about that. Um, up in the lobby, they were very mindful, though, of the tape that's on the floor there. And then I helped with the greeter so that we could direct them just right downstairs where we had already set state set everything up for the six foot distancing but it went very smooth we didn't have any issues at all with so you it. have you already have some tape somewhere um no just upstairs in the lobby or right here in the lobby where around the oh, um, yeah. counter there they were very mindful of that they weren't <clears throat> congregating a lot around that um it went very smooth i didn't have any issues and we called in 48 jurors and they it was quick enough for people to come in and get them up into the courthouse or the um, up into the circuit court to pick our six jurors and our alternates and release everybody else. It went very smooth. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but you, that's the most people that probably will come in at yeah. one time if they're in jury duty. Yeah, and yeah. even then, um, the biggest thing that you have that the, what's hard is um, so with a six person jury, it's not really an issue because even the jury room, you can do the um, social distancing. If it was a 12 person jury, it would be a little harder because there's not enough space up there. Um, and so, as you're moving them from space to space, sometimes um, that six foot overlap can be hard to maintain. But um, that it wasn't a problem in the morning. So, sounds like it can work. I, I'm, I'm leaning more towards the self regulation of the citizens to be able to regulate their own distancing. Okay, so what I see is uh, we open at 8.30 to 5, signage English and Spanish on the doors, um, each office, same thing, the screening guidelines, social distancing, if it becomes a problem, then we will take, a, take that into consideration. So. Next slide. I, I do, I have a question. Is it, you said 8.30 to 5. Has it always been 8.30? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, the door is open at 8. Normally. Well, and the only reason I'm asking is you have grand jury that's 8 o'clock on Tuesdays. So. Which is fine. My mind is on counting time. I never considered that the doors open at 8. So yeah. I stand correct. The doors will open at 8. Okay. Thank you for catching that. I, mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah, you might want to say doors open at 8, but county, county business 8.30 to 5 maybe yeah. or something. Well, I, I may be stuck in the old days. There's sure a lot of county employees that's here way before eight. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so eight to five, the doors will be open to the public. Yep. And, and county county operated businesses. That, well, that is. Or county departments. Well, in jail of, visitation is at eight. Oh, that's true. So both of those yeah, no. and we all the do DA's office, eight, unless eight. you're the clerk's office, it's locked. It's eight to five. And so it's the assessor, even though there's people in there. Okay. The eight to five, the doors will be open. Yep. All right. Consensus of the board? Yep. Yeah, the consensus. All right. So Monday, that would be what we're doing. Thank you. All right. Um, any other questions on that? All right, the next thing. Betty, um, can you hear us? Um, oh, perfect. Can I, am I, I'm unmuted now? Yep, yep. Okay, okay, so what we have before us, I'm, I'm pretty excited about Larry Holt's game because it's got a hold of me uh, to bring this forward to the Board of Commissioners, possibly. And uh, the, it's the state of Oregon is bringing down $2.5 million with a one-to-one -one match. Um, 
that we can apply for economic relief grant program. And so I got a hold of Betty. Um, Betty believes that she's able to leverage twenty-five thousand. I'm proposing that we leverage twenty-five thousand out of the community loan fund to put an application to be matched that fifty with fifty from the state, which would be a hundred thousand dollars, which the people, the businesses that were not eligible or did not make the cut in the CARES per round, right, could apply for this by formula. So it, it has to be administered by somebody. So I asked Betty if she was able to administer it. And she said yes. So before us today, and I'll let her talk here in a minute, is to make a commitment on that, which doesn't guarantee us to get it, but it would be able to build put the application in, which is due by Monday. And so, Betty, whatever I missed, would you um, like to speak to a little bit? Sure. Um, well, first of all, the the application process is primarily um, putting together an application that shows that the leverage is committed from the local communities. You have the ability to, um, you know, I, I'm looking at applying on behalf of all of the communities within the two counties. So we have City of Climate Falls, Climate County also putting dollars in. With, so it would be one application, however, the dollars would be allocated into the communities where the match came from. So um, so that would, that would mean that the funds that you put up as a Lake County would stay within Lake County and go to the businesses there. The businesses cannot have any more than 25 employees. Uh, there's different different levels of, of funding suggested that, that the state wants us to follow. We do have to make an effort to make sure that underrepresented or traditional businesses um, um, do have access to this funds. And so I'll be working with, with CAT and the SBDC. And, and others to be able to make sure your Hispanic community business owners also, um, you know, are aware of the program, uh, whether or not we need to do that in, in Spanish or not, we'll determine. But we'll also make sure we make an effort to get money out uh, to all. Whoever has a phone ringing, could you go on mute, please? I think, it's, I think it's Betty's it's Betty. office phone. That's, that's online, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> I, it's, hard to, it's hard to talk and, and, and uh, Keep the phone up, but uh, Pam was on another line when that one came through, so she's she's got All it right. now. Sorry about that. I couldn't tell where it's coming from. <laughs> yeah, um, the 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 uh, program does not come with administrative funding, but uh, I think I don't think it's going to be an issue because I have received some supplemental funding um, through through some foundation grants and things that can help cover the expense of, of doing it. The state is actually putting the application together, so they want a standardized application format and criteria and information that they, they need to gather. So it's not like we have to do a whole lot of the paperwork and background stuff. We just have to make sure that we are taking in the applications. The only question um, I would have from you is if you had any um, <clears throat> Uh, way uh, we've talked over here, of, uh, like with the city of Climate Falls, of taking applications in and doing a lottery. If we get more applications, we have fund for, or if there's any, um, you know, other criteria that might um, come into play, and how you would, you know, if or if it's just a first come first serve, we date stamp the applications, and if they're eligible, they they got their application in first, then they get the funds. So that, that's a question that I would want some guidance on and whether or not uh, you, anyone in Lake County wanted to be part of a review committee if there was a review process. Good question. Um, so, so I guess it's a, a two-part question. If we was going to first come, first serve, or however, we'd want to regulate that, right? Yeah. Go ahead. My, my question is, if you, you're looking for a citizen, not necessarily a board commissioner or one of the commissioners, you're looking for or one of our staff, I would think. Yeah. Okay. The, the one thing that we're at, 
uh, we're required to make sure that they have not received any funding through the CARES um, Act. So anyone who has already applied for and received funding through that are not eligible for this program. So they have to be folks that either could not get that fund or did not apply for that. Right. So that, that's basically the other criteria. And that they have to be reopening. Uh, we're not, they don't want us to spend the money on businesses that aren't going to survive. Well, I, I see Anne has moved, so hopefully she can see and talk, but I, I went straight to thinking because we'd be using community development homes or if we right. would be able to be part of that process. Yes, I, I would be willing and happy to help out with this process. Betty, when you say a business hasn't, they can't have already received CARES Act funding, does that include the Paycheck Protection Program? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay. So we, we uh, and that is very, that is specified in the state, state funds, that that, okay. that is part of this program. Uh, the, the money is, was approved by the legislature and that is, was one of the criteria, or by the emergency board, I guess. Who, who approved the funding, and they they want to make sure that we're we're getting it out to those those businesses that did not have access to any other funding. Okay. So um, for discussion, I when you talk about first come or what the criteria is, I would really like to be able to the first and foremost ones that would get the first attention would be the ones by the executive order that got shut down and have have no revenue at all. That would be right. your, your salons, that'd be your barbers, that'd be your gyms. And what are the right. executive orders said, you, you're you done. Uh, I, I think they they should move to the front of the line because they've been without any revenue for two and a half months now. And so that's for discussion. That's my thought. I, I totally agree with you. I think there's and, and, and that really is. The, where where I see the need to those sole proprietors of those businesses that just they may not even have any employees, uh, you know, if they're zero to five, they still qualify. So if, if it's somebody who has not been able to work, you know, like you mentioned, the barber or something along those lines, they would qualify for an outright grant and to, with the idea that it, they, it will help them get up and going again. So, and thank you guys, because that, that's where I'm at on that. I, just a thought I would think that there would be on the county's half or even SCOET's half, there might be opportunity as people come in to let them know that there is loan component also. There's this grant side of it, but we have our, our loan program that some of them may right. need to be looking at going before the loan committee. So uh, this could turn out to be a very positive to help some of our business weather the storm and get back on their feet. Yeah, I, um, again, as I mentioned, uh, I, I presented to Klamath County yesterday that the SCOET board is meeting on Friday, and so I will be discussing some of the additional staffing that uh, have, have the budget committee has recommended in my, in my budget so that we'll have more people out there to really help work on those loan packages and, and assist with those applications also. So I, I have one other question, and. Um, if, if we as a board was to award the 25,000, you're able to ask the executive board if we could leverage 25 from the regional investment funds, I believe it was. That would be a total of 100 for Lake County if we got awarded it. Um, is there time? And uh, I have not reached out to the town of Lakeview, but if we agree to this today, would you consider reaching out to the town of Lakeview and see if? They had any at all to put towards it because every dollar right. creates I, another dollar. I, I, yeah, no, I uh, I realized that I did not specifically reach out to them. I am on the city council meeting uh, Zoom meeting tonight with the town of or the city of Clinton Falls. So I uh, and um, uh, Michelle was not in the office last Friday when I first heard about this. So I'll I'll have to re and I. Uh, I should have reached out to her Monday, um, but I did not do that. But I can, I will see if the town also has 
has some funding that they could allocate towards this, even if it's you know five or ten thousand dollars, it would it would then bring in another five or ten thousand dollars. Absolutely, yes. So Betty, when there's only two point five million from Business Oregon, have they said how they're going to award or distribute? I would think that's going to go really fast. Right. So is there a geographic distribution or? Oh, we can't, we can't hear you, Betty. Hear me, they, Betty. They oh. are allocating 60% of the fund. Yeah, my, my, uh, my computer is breaking up here a little too. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. 60 so, um, okay. Um, the 60% uh, of the funds are required to go to rural communities. And on the, the, the uh, webinar that they held, they described rural communities as 30,000 or less in the urban growth boundary. So Lake County is actually qualified more than Klamath, um, the city of Klamath Falls is. So I would think that, that that would strengthen the application that we would put in okay. and, and make it feasible. So at least the priorities, basically. Good. Okay. Good to hear. So, are you looking for a motion? Oh. Yes. These, these funds you, are. You, you uh, have a question. These funds right. are purely grant. It's not a loan. Grant. Okay. Either correct. It's all grant. Up to two thousand dollars. Well, it uh, <coughs> it depends on the zero to five employees. It, Twenty-five hundred dollars, or if it's sixty-day fixed expenses, up to five thousand. So let's go with the five thousand. If we had hundred thousand, we could get to twenty different businesses. And that's just there's there's criteria. I, I send it out. You guys probably didn't print it off. I have a print. If you have it, yeah. Um, Kevin, you have a question. Just real quickly, um, if we get the money, would businesses apply through SCOED or through the county? Well, that's. We ask Ann if she could step up. So okay. the local businesses here would probably go right to Ann, and she would get it right. Work with Betty. Um, it has to be administered. We're going looking at having it administered through the the district, um, but it could be collected right here with Ann. Is that way you would see it also, Betty? Or I think that was an odd. Uh, we can't hear you, but there's a. Yes, we saw your head nodding. So. Yeah, it's. I, I have a break. I've got a uh, bad connection apparently here. Um, so the. Um, okay. Okay, so Betty. Yeah, uh, uh, what I was saying is, I don't. I don't trust the mail. Anymore, and I think it would be better if there was a local drop -in. Okay, yeah. that answers the yeah. question. Thank you, Betty. So, my, my, she ought to just call, hang, hang up, we, and we come get, back we in. We could have her call in on the phone line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Why don't yeah, we... would that help? I, because I, apparently my internet is acting up. Okay, um. Let, let's go ahead and do that real quick so she can at least finish what she wanted to say. Okay. And it may not. All right. So, should, do I need to go get, get in and host the call or just call, just call on there? Okay. Yeah. If you want to just call me, I'll answer. Her phone number's on the, that email that you have the second one that okay. second page there. All right. I'll just <coughs> call on there. 541. Eight eight four eight five five nine three five five nine three. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only do that when there's senators on the line. So there's Brad apparently. That's what I said. Mark, Mark yeah, Mike he is. totally tattled on you. <laughs> Hello. Hey, can uh, hear you. Okay, Betty. Sorry about that, guys. No worries. I have a, I have a problem with this program. Quite often, my and let me. Um, I'm leaving the meeting. Okay, sounds good. All right.
so now I don't have that echo. <laughs> All right. So, um, so I'm on speaker, I assume? Yep, yes. Okay. Uh, what I was saying is that having someone, a place to drop off applications and, and um, you know, take them in is probably would have expediated because I do not trust mail <laughs> anymore. We've had issues here in, in not having our mail delivered in a timely manner. So I think it's a good idea if Ann is willing to accept the applications and then we can communicate via email in that way. So, that works for us. Sounds good. And, and I also know a lot of businesses don't are, are get challenged um, with emailing or scanning and emailing, so it, it would probably be better just to get them get them out into the community. Right. So, and and the okay. internet can be sketchy. So. Yes, it can. <laughs> <laughs> right. So so Betty, um, the application would go in by Monday. What's the turnaround time? that you are hearing from the state of Oregon, from Business Oregon, um, because obviously the public meeting and the press is here, right. and so there will be an expectation possibly from sure. the citizens. We, we, they are hoping to turn around their, their decisions by the end of May. So I was hearing May 31st. So they they basically will, um, will you know, look at what they get and, and decide, and, be allocate funds. Um, the funds, if, if GoEd is the applicant on behalf of you, then we would enter into a forgivable loan with the state, and the funds would then come to our organization for disbursement, and we would be the reporting organization. And um, that way, you know, you don't have to. But I would handle all of the the state um, interactions. Okay, and. Uh Thank you for that. Um, as we get that application in, I predict we may push Oregon business, Oregon, and everything get to get a process faster, if possible. Right. So, all right. Um, so with that, I, you want me to make a motion or you can? Yeah, go ahead. I, I'll make a motion to set aside twenty-five thousand dollars out of the community loan program Lake County has to leverage. 25 from SCOED and 50 from the state of Oregon for the application for the uh, economic relief grant program. Perfect. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. We have a lot of discussion. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I sure hope okay. sure hope we get 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 a Betty. So um well um, I'm working with Kat on the application on Friday after the board meeting and uh, so we will and she she was part of the um, the committee that put the program together so I'm she's she's a volunteer to help also making sure we get the funding out into our community so and, and we may may see a round two of this possibly another 2.5 from business Oregon later on Have you that, that that is what they're indicating yeah they they wanted to get this much out as as fast as they could, and then they'll look at potentially another round. So, Very good. Uh, this is Larry Holzgang. Hey, uh, Larry, well, we are anticipating the second two and a half million to come out around June first. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so Larry, that that would indicate maybe that the turnaround on the applications may be a little bit sooner than the right in the May. Oh yes, because they want you to have your plan in place by the end by May thirtieth to implement the program. Okay, very good, Larry. I appreciate you uh, keeping us abreast of this, and uh, we sure hope that we qualify and get these dollars. Any I also too. Any other comments or thoughts? We will adjourn at three minutes after two. Thank you.